Welcome into the live stream here for McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil. That's Tyler. How what are it you? is, sir? Oh, just just uh, getting some getting some football writing done here on this uh, Thursday afternoon, opening day. Trying to get myself into the uh, MLB mood. Yeah, it's here, man. It's one of my favorite favorite days of the year. Although my boys aren't playing today, they right. got rained out. They were supposed to play in Philly. Yep. Yeah. I think Philly and New York got rained out today. That's right. I did see where the Mets got rained out. But they do this weird thing on opening weekend where they play a game and then they skip a day. Yes. And they play two more. So it really didn't. Almost to kind of give room for that. They're, that or they're trying to get the full effect of opening day. So whatever. But no, I'm glad they, they'll be rolling out I mean, there tomorrow. I mean, this is quite the production in Baltimore. The 2024 World Series champs. Be playing tomorrow. I don't know oh, what. I thought you were referring to these guys. I've got the Braves beating the Orioles in the World Series this year. Yeah, my Bravo's got to figure mm. out what they're going to do in the with the. Uh, you know, they, they added Chris Sale, so they got Sale, Freed, and uh, Strider, and mm. they got Charlie Morton. Yeah. So, you know, Elder, who started the All Star game last year, is starting the league in the minors, starting the year in the minors. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. So mental thing. Probably after the All Star break last year, he just constantly shit the bed, and he was probably pitching way above his head, and he was getting run support and all that stuff. Had a great record and all that jazz, but he's average as grits, and it showed. I would imagine playing in the major leagues is a stressful thing. It it could be, yeah, I could see that facing facing a major league lineup every fifth day, where you look up and there's. Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos and Trey Turner. And then the next time it's Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. And I got to think that probably begins to wear on you mentally. Probably. Probably does wear on you. Did you watch any of the games in Korea? Uh, I watched the last few innings of the second game. I forgot all about it. I mean, it's so typical Major League Baseball, isn't it? I didn't even like, I mean, I knew that they were doing it, but I didn't ever see it advertised or anything. Uh, that's what I mean. They, they're they awful at what they do. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty big deal. I, I mean... That was last Thursday, right? Last Wednesday and Thursday? Yeah. Maybe? Sounds probably right. March Madness probably scooped it up. So, Yeah, but still. I mean, Major League Baseball has always opened amidst March yeah. Madness. They used to open on the Monday of the National Championship game. Yeah. And you knew it was baseball. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, it's, it's – I've heard people do that. I'm like, wait a minute. There are some of us who can multitask. I mean, there are people who can be aware of multiple things at one time. This is facts. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why baseball has. Yet I saw a thing in Forbes. They were doing the valuations of franchises. It's remarkable how much money they're all worth. I mean, Cubs are worth four hundred. I'm sorry, five hundred and thirty-eight. They got to be over a billion, huh? Yeah, it was, it was like five point three eight billion dollars. Yeah. Cardinals were worth like three billion. I mean, just. Yeah, yeah, tons of money. All sports franchises with TV deals have gone through the roof in the last 20 years. It's like uh, what Mark Cuban, he paid like $280 million or something, something for, like the, that. for the Mavs. It's a steal. <laughs> Pretty good investment. Well, we were, we were talking about this before you get started. The Orioles uniform is so good. The Orioles uniform is so good that it, makes, it almost makes me want to just be an Orioles fan. Just because the uniform is I'm glad they basically brought, perfect. I'm glad they brought back the old school. Yeah. I will... Uh, the 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 new hat and everything with the Cal Ripken era in the, in the mid '90s with the bird, I guess the Oriole on the hat, it was good for a year or two, but it, it got old. The uniform that that I used to love, that was just the cleanest ever, that's kind of gone. Nobody even talks about it anymore. Was when the White Sox went to black and white. Oh yeah, that was a big deal in the '90s when they went away from red and blue. Now now you want to kind of see. I guess I'm getting to the age where I'm ready to see some retro stuff. Like I love when the Braves are in the royal blue and baby blue. Yeah, like that's that's even though you how awful you thought that uniform was back then, like that's like my favorite. If you if I had to go buy a Braves jersey, that's what I'd buy. I don't own a jersey, so I've been to Old Memorial Stadium, went to a game there when they were playing at the Old Park, and I've been to Camden Yards. Five games. Okay, it's it's cool. I, it's a cool place. The only stadium out, like I, I've obviously been to Atlanta. I haven't been to a lot of Major League Baseball stadiums. Um, played a football game in what used to is uh, Qualcomm Park. It used to be Jack Murphy. Oh yeah. Um, played a football game there. Um, yeah. 
obviously the Braves went to the old Yankee Stadium, went to new Yankee Stadium, never been to the Mets, never been, went to Shea or uh, City Field. I've, I've been, been I've been to old Yankee Stadium. I've not been to the new one. I'd yeah. like, like to go. Uh, I've been to Washington's Park, Minnesota's Park. Um, haven't been to the Braves' new park. Been to the, it's nice. Been to the old. I've seen it. Been by it. Uh, been to Wrigley, of course. Um, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Anaheim, Giants. Been to a good many. There's still a bunch I'd like to go see. Yep. Uh, Kauf, old dude. Kaufman for Kansas City. I've been to, been to, the, to uh, St. Louis. I need some rain today. I got a long night. All right, here we go. Long, cold night. Listen, that that's that, we're not going to talk about your oh, – oh, oh, you meant baseball. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were – what are you talking about? I don't know. I thought you were like complaining about your marriage or something, saying long, cold no, night, I, you know? I don't have that problem yet. Welcome into episode 162 of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil McCready. That's Tyler Siski here on this Thursday afternoon. It's uh, March the 28th. Next time we convene, yes. it will be April. So the, the final show of March. Looking forward for your tweet. On Monday. This is April. It's Monday, right? Yep, Monday. Uh, Major League Baseball opens up today. It's opening day for everybody with the exception of the Dodgers and the Padres and I guess the Mets and the – I don't know who the Mets are supposed to open with. Braves and Phillies. Braves, Phillies. I can't remember who the Mets were playing. There's my hero right there growing up. Kyle Ripken. Yep, that was my my hero. He was amazing. Uh, So got that going on. Sweet 16 gets going tonight in a couple – Los Angeles and somewhere. Detroit, I think they have games uh, tonight. So um, talk about that and uh, some football topics as well. We're brought to you each and every show Got to go by our there. friends at Rain Total Body Fuel. 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals. So check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. Neil, we got a we got a big night in Oxford. The Chargers are taking on Lewisburg for the big seven A Region One series opener game one tonight. So this so, is a playoff game. No, this is a this is a, re, a region game. So okay. it's second series, but the big one against Lewisburg. They got they got more pitching than the Braves. Okay. So got them tonight. So I'm gonna be cold tonight. So I have to have a little juice. So Neil, I brought out the heavy hitter. So they almost went, almost went, almost. You know what? I almost brought out today. Oh. Like the Red Dragon? I almost brought out the Red Dragon, oh. but, I, but I didn't because I don't need to get ejected from a game as a fan. I, I get these these baseball officials are driving me nuts. I'm, I'm turning into that guy. The longer I'm out of it, I'm turning into that guy. So I went with the old peach nectarine, the second best option. This is gets me hype but keeps me light. Okay. You like that? I like that. All right, so this is, in case you didn't know, Neil, this is like drinking a Chilton County peach in a can. You told me that. I didn't know if you've heard that or not. I'd heard it. It's really good. So, Neil, the Cooper Chevrolet chat is already bumping. I see my guy Chance in there. What's up, Chance? Chance will be taking care of our boys tonight. Cooper Chevrolet, how about this? The first oh, all- I know who Chance is. I think Carson was going to see Chance the other day. He was having some little knee Yeah, Chance is stuck. Issue, yeah. Um, People like that, they don't get the credit they deserve. No. See, Chance and I got this. So I've known Chance prior to him being there, Mm -hmm. like when I was working at Ole Miss. And so we have this communication. I'm like, hey, just tell me if it's bad. If it's not bad, tell him to suck it up and go play. That's what I – that's kind of my – I'm 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 the worst parent probably. I'm the best parent for him, but probably the worst parent when it comes to injuries. But anyway, Neil, the Cooper Chevrolet chat's already bumping. They have their very first all-new 2024 Chevy Blazer electric vehicles have hit the lot. So you can call Cooper Chevrolet at 256-236-4481 and get a test drive today. So make sure you tell those guys that McCready and Siski sent you. Absolutely. Yeah, so they got, with all this, uh, I was talking to Greg the other day, with all this, uh, you know, backup and everything, they're actually starting. This should be the first year that they start looking like normal car lots again after after the uh, that little eight-month probation period we had back in 2020 where they were – Converted into making ventilators and shit. <laughs> hey, did you uh, did you go to the sit in at Vanderbilt? Did you? All right, what was all right? So I've heard. <laughs> I haven't read anything about it. I've just seen people pissed off about it. What happened? 
So, <laughs> just cliff notes. I just know All a bunch right. of people were pissed. There was supposed to be some sort of a vote on campus about whether Vanderbilt should keep giving money to Israel or something. I don't know. And anyway, there was this, a protest in the chancellor's office. Sit in. It lasted twenty one hours. Twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> Committed. They were uh, they were all masked. Thank God. Oh. Um. So the president can go back to work safely. Yes. The, okay. the president can, protecting the president. He knows that he's safe when he gets back to uh, back to work. <laughs> At one point, they you know they had to have officers to oversee all this. At one point, okay. they they got uh, Panera bread for the officers. Oh, that's nice. And, and the students got very upset that they did not get Panera bread. <laughs> the the protesters. They, yes. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, the coup de grace, the, the the one that the moment that it became funny. <laughs> one of the uh, young women. Are you allowed to say woman? Uh, maybe not in that protest. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I'm sure that that sounds like that protest came came complete with pronouns and everything. She, <laughs> maybe uh, even some adverbs. <laughs> she needed to change her tampon. Oh, quit. Well, she did. Oh, this quit. is this is where the story went. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked her. <laughs> And she was needed to go to the restroom to do that. And to get to the restroom, she was going to have to leave the, the area. The, the area. Yeah, protest area. The chancellor apparently doesn't have a toilet right in the middle of his office. Oh, that's a shame. It but is. he does now. <laughs> <laughs> Party <pump. laughs> Probably part of the yeah. negotiations. Yeah. So, uh, collective bargain agreement. <laughs> they, they told the young lady that she wouldn't be arrested. <clears throat> When she went to the restroom, they didn't promise her that she'd never be arrested, just that oh. she wouldn't be arrested right then. And there became a concern that uh, she put the protest in front of her needs. And there was a concern among some of her contemporaries that if she left the tampon in, that it could result in toxic shock and that it would endanger her life. So uh, ultimately, <sighs> ultimately, she uh, removed the tampon there in the in in the protest area quit yes oh. apparently it was quite a uh, quite the scene <laughs> imagine <laughs> so the message is wear, wear a pad to the protest damn it I, i'm just not i don't have any follow-up on that i'm good i'm no follow-up i'm glad I'm, there's a you know what my brain knows when not to open up articles and things yeah it told me yeah it hey hey look this this is not for you just skip on down maybe that alternate timeline or whatever it is hey just keep skipping on down yeah. the road this one's not that's when i send articles like that to my kids and say i would kill you <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> no i didn't know that that's uh, uh that's yeah. interesting so i'm glad that so we're, we're, what was the protest i mean i get the story but what was the protest again about it's about something about vanderbilt and its support of israel there's a there's a dispute going on in the middle east i'm not sure if you've heard about I've it. i've heard about that yeah yeah i've heard about that that's going to be, uh, that's, yeah, I've heard about that. All right, Neil, let's jump in this bad boy. I, I, that, like, you got me on that one. No, but. Do you I, know what a challenge it's going to be for me this fall <laughs> to really focus in on football when we have all of this stuff going on and I'm, I'm watching it. I go. think it's going to be okay though. I think it, I'll be able to do it. I always no, do but it. I'm saying like, I think it's going to be okay to navigate away because what people aren't thinking about is the football season's changed a little bit Yeah. to where. You you basically the only thing that matters is the postseason now, and so you can save your energy for that. And really, the last I'd probably say probably where you're gonna get like a lot of like we're into this is like right after the election, probably the weekend after the election is probably when the football games that matter for getting into the playoffs and things like that. Because you know there's a saying that what happens they only remember what happens in November. Neil, I remember seeing that. You've heard that? I've heard that before. Um, so. I think with the election being early in November, obviously, I think that would be that that'll get out of the way and then you'll be able to focus on football. So at the beginning, it's just like, we'll just pod, you know what I mean? Just do what we do. I have people asking oh, where the Orioles game. I have the MLB app and I also have Fubo. So that's where the Major League Baseball games are. Yeah. But it's not on mainstream television right now. I was telling Neil, I have the Major League Baseball package on Amazon. Is that me or you? That's me. I, I've, I've got a notification issue on my phone. Um, I have it on Amazon Prime, and I think Neil is now, as of five minutes before the show, transferred his Major League Baseball package to Fubo. Is it Fubo or Fubu? Fubo. Fubo. Fubu is the clothing line. All right, Neil, let's jump in this bad boy. Um, 
very interesting topic to start to start the show with today. I think you'll get a kick out of this. So my man Ross Dellinger, who I love, he's one of the one of the very few writers of college football that I actually read their articles. Um, he's one of my favorites. I know him. Per- I ha- you know Hanray's guy. I do know him personally. Yeah, I think he's a great dude. So that probably can. Uh, but he's very dedicated, good writer. He writes for Yahoo Sports. So um, Ross wrote an article yesterday that's gotten a lot of fun. Uh, it's basically a re- rinse and repeat of a rule that was proposed last year that did not get through, and it kind of surprised everybody it didn't get through. And they think it's going to get through this year, and it's going to change the whole makeup. But <laughs> It's going to be a part of, if this is a different year, this would be the biggest story in college football. But right now we're talking about NIL and transfer portal and all that stuff, so it kind of takes a back seat to that, obviously. Yep. So they are going – they have proposed the rule. Uh, they got six weeks to kind of like get all the school feedback and all that thing, all that stuff, but proposed the rule where any full-time staff member can now coach. All right? Okay. Any full-time – there's not going to be any um, – so it's going to cause staffs to blow up, blow up. The kicker to this rule is what follows, um, which is the interesting part to me. The rule states that you still can only have 11 coaches, that's the head coach and 10 assistant coaches, on the road to recruit. Mm -hmm. However, however, it's at the head coach's discretion where he can name by himself, he can appoint 10 other staff members to be considered off-campus recruiters. So this is going to, if they're basically they're saying, hey, look, if you're not going to help us with the calendar, we got to help ourselves. Um, I'm a big believer. One, I think this is going to open up a bunch of more opportunities for coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, but two is is it's, with the transfer portal and things like that, we're we're coming in a time here in two weeks. Okay, April fifteenth to April thirtieth, right? Yep. This portal window is going to be open. What well, do you know? What coincident uh, coincidentally starts on April the fifteenth? Spring recruiting starts the exact same day. Well, not many staffs are going to be in a hurry to jump on, jump on, the, on a plane and go recruit high school kids. And what are they going to do instead? They're going to kind of stay at home and protect home base yeah. and keep their guys from going to the portal. You don't. That's when all this stuff happens, and it's in breaks when the kids are away from the coaches and all that stuff. You want to have those coaches there. Well, what is this going to allow you to do? It's probably going to save some years of service on some coaches and turn it into what the NFL is, where you're basically you have a true – front office where they go scout and recruit and do those mm-hmm. things. And when they come back in, they, they help the, they're the assistant offensive line coach or whatever it is. Um, but it's going to blow staffs up, give more opportunities. Um, I, I think it's going to be, it's really going to change the game a lot, a lot. I, I feel like I'm just beating the same drum over and over and over the, the multiple portal windows. <clears throat> Notice I did not bring up the portal. I know. <laughs> I did, but I mean, I didn't discussion wise. I mean, it's gotten to where there's there's no. I mean, like from a, I'll use a media perspective. I've got something going on that weekend, uh, Thursday the eighteenth, probably Wednesday the seventeenth. I've got to leave, and I'm going to be mostly out of pocket on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And I think it's just going to be guys getting in the portal. And so I'll be able to catch up at night and go, yeah. well, here are the 400 people that got in the portal, and here's the five that might be applicable to the school that I cover. But it's insane. What it tells you is there's just never, there's never a break from it. No. And I, I Well, this prov- would provide, I guess, a le- it would almost make it, hell, it would make it almost back what it used to be. Mike Trout goes deep. In his first at bat of the season, man, he's gonna hit a lot of home. He's on pace to hit like five hundred home runs this year. He's on, yeah, right now he's on pace to hit like six hundred home runs. <laughs> that would be amazing. But this would alleviate a lot of that. Um, one, and it's gonna provide more opportunities for coaches, um, more jobs, which is always a good thing. I'm always a proponent for that. But it really it has. It's gotten too much to you. You can't look. I, I'm not gonna say who it is or anything like that. I have a friend who is a head football coach in the Southeastern Conference that literally changed his entire winter recruiting plan, his December recruiting plan, because he was scared to death to leave and go recruit high school kids uh, yeah. b- because other people were going to be coming to see his kids. Yeah. 
So he was like, I'm going to do more value to our organization by staying here and keeping people away from our kids than I am going recruiting high school kids. So how's it work? They get in the portal and then they can start taking visits in May? Well, they can, I guess they can start go, they can start taking, I don't know when the date starts. Maybe it's May 1st. I can't remember, but they can go pretty much, they can go visit wherever and uh, they can enroll in June, you know, first, first of June. So it'll be late April, early May. Yeah. They got to start getting yeah. But the, again, the portal visits are easy because they're, they're quick and they're, they're transactional uh, monetarily and yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but besides all the portal stuff, the big thing here is like, you're going to start seeing college recruiting departments looking more and more like the NFL. Okay. I mean, I was joking with a couple of friends. We were joking with some buddies of mine last couple of days. I was like, you know, your boy may have to go down to the bullpen and start loosening up, start loosening up the old wing. You know, I might, you know, I had might have to take my turf sauce. I'm in the dugout. Might have to take my turf sauce and start, may have to lace the cleats up just in case, you know what I mean? So all kidding aside, if this rule was, if this rule was in place when, when I was, I, I don't know if I'd ever got out. Cause now you can send some of the younger coaches out on the road recruiting, doing the evaluation stuff, right? Yeah, you can send whoever. Yeah, you name ten coach, like literally, they could send Pat Jerning in the trainer. So it basically, doubles the staff. At least, yes. Yeah, it doubles your staff, and so you're going to turn it into an NFL staff, is what you're doing. Yeah, you're going to have a front office that deals with recruiting, and then, but like, let's say, but there's no restrictions on coaching either, right? So now the assist, you can technically have two, just like the NFL does. You have an offensive line coach and an assistant offensive mm -hmm. line coach. Um, so it's probably going to be that assistant offensive line coach. If you got an older coach, right, instead of running him out of the game because he's like, hell, I ain't doing this shit no more. I'm not doing all this recruit. Like, hey, here's a great one, Chip Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Chip Kelly's the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. He doesn't want to go do all the recruiting stuff. He's done. I mean, that's. Yeah. Now he'll go watch the court, the three or four guys that he needs to go see or whatever it is, but he's not going to get in a car and go go to Florida and get off an airplane and start driving around Miami Dade County. No, of course not. All right, so if he now he can be a, at at home coach, he doesn't have to go recruiting. Now you now you can keep your your coaches around a little bit longer and keep them from going to the NFL because now college has turned into the NFL. If that makes sense, it does. Oh, it absolutely has. from a coaching perspective. Absolutely, from the, has. for those ten on yeah. the field coaches, they it's, it will be almost identical from them being an NFL position coach. There will be some programs that are not going to be able to staff this out. They're not going to have the finances to do it. The same ones that are going to break off and doing the yeah. revenue stuff are going to be the same ones that do this. Yeah, and then they can still do it now, but now you're. They'll be a, a lower paid analyst job or something like an inner. Uh, it'll be a great job for. Let me tell you who will help. Like these young coaches that are GAs and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Instead of being a GA for 47 years, they can go get, let's say you're a GA at South Alabama. Okay. All right. And you can go get the assistant receivers job uh, at Mississippi State and, and get your own field and go get your recruiting experience and all that stuff. And, but be the assistant. And still get your recruiting done, and you and it won't cost you, you know, you're not going to be making a ton of money, but you'll. It's a way to get you paid and get you in the business. So, I think it's going to open the door for a, a ton of coaches. I think it'll open the door for a lot of high school coaches too. Yeah. To make that jump to to college, um, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be interesting there. We don't have life advice today, but when we do, it's presented by Cole Walters of State Farm Insurance. Cole is licensed in auto, home, life, health, business, and pet insurance for the whole state of Georgia. So contact Cole at 706-525-7850. Again, 706-525-7850. You can also find him at ColeWaltersInsurance.com. Grind says, and the Cooper Chevrolet chat says, just feels like we're chasing our tail now when it comes to college football. I, I agree. This right here is a good rule. This needs to happen. Okay, we've done all this stuff to jack the calendar up and to jack roster building all that stuff up. You need to give something to relate to keep this. And it's you're losing. Like you said it, I don't know how many times mm -hmm. over the last year and a half. Hey, we're losing good quality coaches. Yep. You know what? This is going to help that. Yeah. And if you can do anything to do that, at least you provide the avenue for them to do it. Same way you're providing the avenue to pay uh, NIL. The same people who are paying kids in the collectives are the same teams that will be taking advantage of this rule. Okay, so we're already doing it. You know, at the beginning, the reason the rule didn't pass, you'll find this funny, is they didn't want to separate. Uh, they didn't want to create any more separation between the haves and the haves nots. And then NIL said, hey, hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> and so they're like, well, screw it now. So I think it will pass, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Did so, you know one of the things that we hadn't talked about briefly? Yeah, you're good. 
the SEC to SEC rule that was under that doesn't apply anymore. It's gone. Yep. Thank you, federal government. No, it's gone. I mean, even the SEC has to follow federal laws, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't think so. <laughs> total. Greg Sankey's like, this is a rule I have to follow. God dang it. Total chaos, potentially. I said on a show, on our call-in show, did I not, that we were going to have chaos? Yes. And I knew of how many, did I say four to five? Yes. Okay. I'm just telling you. Yeah. I didn't make that shit up. No. I mean, it's why it's when. Going, the- it, I'm, and I was referring interconference, by the way. Yeah. It's why when the, I saw a post, everybody thought I was talking about somebody else. No, I was talking interconference. It's it's why when the Quinshawn Judkins thing came up, I was like, well, I mean, yeah, I've heard it. I don't believe it, but I've heard it. But here's the thing: like, you can't rule anything out now. No, I, I, I give Lane Kiffin credit. I asked him. I said, "Is there anything you can do to kind of prevent that from happening?" And his answer was, "No, no." Nothing really. He goes, I, I told people we need to figure out a way to, you know, make it, make it good for a year. But no, no not really. I got to give Lane credit for something. And Lord knows I don't have a long list of this. So I'm going to give him credit for something. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I appreciate what Lane does is he's very, one, he's two things I appreciate. One, he's very vocal about it. And more coaches need to be more, more coaches with big names that have a following need to be more vocal about it. Most of them are scared to death to be vocal about it because of the backlash. Lane, this is not. Um, that's one of Lane's great qualities in life. It's one thing we do have in common. Lane and I do both have this in common. We could give two shits what everybody else thinks. No doubt. All right, so I give him credit for that. And then two is this. I thought his answer the other day was was absolutely transparent. I thought it was brilliant when he says, it's a shitty system. We'll utilize it because that's what we're supposed to do, but it's bad. The the second thing, that's probably I'm building off what what that what he, what you were talking about, what he said. Um, but the second thing I give him credit about is he is definitely benefiting from the, from mm-hmm. the, and most people who benefit from that situation wouldn't say a damn word. Right. And he's actually being vocal while benefiting and which people should listen. Now, how much will they listen? I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're listening to a whole lot of anybody right now, obviously, but no, there's an arrogance around college football right now. I had a conversation with a national r- reporter the other day and I was like, you guys, man, I mean, Y'all are doing this deal where it's it, – and, and I don't know if you, you – this is a college football thing. It's an NBA – NBA writers do this too. Everything's great. <laughs> Isn't this the greatest? <laughs> and I come to think of it, college basketball writers do it. March rolls around. And they're like, this is the greatest time of the year. This uh, is April. It's like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to acknowledge that there are things wrong. It's allowed. You're in the media. Your job's not to propagandize. Your job is to report. But there's this fear of saying anything. I mean, I always go back to what I've said many times, then I'll stop. Oh, you're good. That's all we got today's time. In the 19, late 70s, early 80s, this was bigger than the National Football League. Yeah. In the late 1970s, the NBA Finals were played on tape delay. <laughs> I did not know that until I watched uh... – What's the show on HBO? I love that it got canceled. Uh, the Lakers uh, Showtime. Showtime. That yeah. was great. In the I didn't realize that until that show. In the seventies and eighties, boxers. Oh yeah, were absolutely. I mean, those are household names. Mike Tyson. You think the peak of the boxing uh, era? Yeah, probably. I mean, well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, probably he and Holyfield and all those guys. But before that, I mean. Muhammad Ali and yeah, Sugar, Sugar Ray mm-hmm. Leonard and Marvin Hagler. I'm saying the, I shouldn't say the peak, the ending yeah, of that yeah. era. Well, but the point is, is that it wasn't that long ago historically. Okay, I mean, 25, 30 years? Yeah. Don't tell me nothing changes. I, it does. Does climate change? No. <laughs> well, I mean, if we This could, episode brought to you by the Biden Harris administration just, 2024. If we could just get all of the cars off the roads and get the cows to stop farting, we'd be good. But alas... But no, I mean this assumption that what is it now twenty twenty four that in tw- it is all day long that in twenty all year long that in twenty fifty football is going to still be as healthy and popular as it is today. It's possible. It's possible. It's not. If it goes away, I'm just uh, it's it's I, I was just I was I was meant to be live during the football era. I don't know if I could I could function during. Well, I'm not saying era. it'll go away. Boxing didn't. I'm not I'm not saying football won't thrive. That football won't become more popular. But I'm just saying when people look at something and go, this is I mean, Lane Kiffin. Who makes 
nine million dollars a year. And let's say Lane Kiffin were to win the national championship, his his salary, and he's one of ten to eleven teams that people think has a chance to do it. His salary jumps to like twelve million bucks. He's he's got it. He's got it going. There, he has incentives. He had an incentive to win. <laughs> he has incentives to go. Hey, football, right? But he's going this system. And privately, <laughs> privately, what people are saying, and I'll get off of it. You're good. What people are saying is, I have people send stuff to me on a daily basis, going, "You're right." <laughs> I say it. I say it all. But people who have incentive for me to be wrong. Yeah, you're right. Worried about the fans. Worried about whether fans will continue to be invested in this. I cover a fan base that's all in because it's working. Yep. There's a lot that aren't working. And Most. And when it stops working, and it's really hard to get fans to come back. Yeah. That's what I was talking about the other day. I think it's going to take a full cycle. Like, it's going to take teams. Like I'm trying to think who's, who's like, Missouri's thriving. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss is thriving. Sure. Um. Georgia is thriving. Now, Georgia's was thriving before, but yeah. I'm trying to think of teams who are thriving because of NIL. Ole Miss and Missouri in the SEC. Okay, so it's going to take a full cycle of them having hitting the struggle bus on this cycle before they go, hey, this is stupid. <clears throat> For everybody gets all in. Well, I mean, a scenario where, and this, I don't think this is going to happen. Don't get me wrong. I've not heard this. I'm just throwing this out. Can you imagine the Ole Miss backlash if Walter Nolan got in the portal and transferred to <laughs> Alabama? For the record, he is not one of the ones that I was referring no, to. No, I've not heard his name. Just want to say that before I get accused of something that I that I'm that I'm uh, alluding to. In, in fact, Ole Miss has done a really good job from an NIL standpoint of not overpromising. Yes, because that's what's killing some people. You know that recruiting that that recruiting on credit's a real thing. We talked about now. It is. Nobody wants to listen well, to me. Well, there's either. some schools that are recruiting on credit right now that are getting away with it because they're winning. I'm talking about recruiting on credit during these right now. Yeah, I, I, I am <laughs> month, too. It, we're about halfway. We're almost month six. Well, everybody's undefeated right now. We need to have a good fiscal year, 2025. Everybody's undefeated right That's now. That's it. You know. All right. Um, also, while I was looking at, I was reading some raw stuff. He actually reposted this, and so I saw it. Um, and while we're on the Ross Dellinger segment today, uh, the NCAA is asking states to ban prop bets. Did you see this? Yes think this is a great idea with college players absolutely great idea um hopefully everybody jumps on board this i know i don't know the prop bet rule but i think i imagine it's what it's about i know in mississippi on DraftKings. okay in mississippi mm -hmm. you cannot do fantasy football in the state of mississippi on DraftKings for college football okay now other states you can i just know mississippi you can't so maybe that's what this rule is but this is the last thing Okay, the last thing that college, like athlete, mm -hmm. college administrators want, mm -hmm. like, look, dude. You, so you're saying I don't have to go throw the game, but my over under is 75 yards rushing, and I got it, it's third and four to end of the game, and I'm 10 yards, and I, I need, and I got 65 yards. I break a long run and just happen to fall down or slide inbounds at eight yards gain and come out of the game. We kneel it. I'm in. Like that stuff. A basketball player. The over under is seventeen. His team's up by nine. No, it's, it's his player individual player That's what performance I'm props. So I'm saying the over under on a player scoring for the day is oh, yeah. seventeen points. And they're up and he just misses a layup. He just starts bricking shots. Like or hey, miss a yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. This Come is on. the last th because pro pro players don't do it one because they're already getting paid gazillions of dollars for a lifetime. Okay, they're not going to mess that up. Well, an NFL security would be on you. M NBA security is a, is yeah. a player right now under investigation. They're going to be on your ass. They're going to find it. All right. Those but games it, are so scrutinized. But if it's Monroe versus Toledo on the ESPN Plus app God, at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on, Tuesday. afternoon on the third Saturday in October, <laughs> okay, the only people watching that game are parents. Yeah. Okay, like like that's it. Even the even even the distinguished alumni are at the LSU Alabama game. We'll have a bigger crowd for Oxford Lafayette soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, but hey, look, you know, old Johnny, he's got over under two hundred and fifty yards passing, and he gets to the fourth quarter, and he says he's going to be under. And it, hey, look, I just got to let you know, none of these fixes will be. I need you to hit the over. Every one of them is going to be. I need to need you to hit the under. Look, uh -huh. look, man, you're 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 minus one fifty to throw under two hundred and fifty five yards. Done. Yeah. Done. Just miss a few here and there. Just, hey, just all you got to do is you drop back to pass and you feel the rush, Neil, and you just got to take off on your feet. Yeah. 
You can still go make a play. Because I'm not making any money in NIL there. Right. You're going to give me 50 grand to go throw? I'm in. All day. All day. It's a great rule. They need to get that passed. That's going. That will prevent all kinds of issues. I mean, all kinds of issues. So they need to get that done. <laughs> All right, Neil, uh, you, got anything, you got any more bills to pay before we jump to the next segment? No, we're good. All right. All paid up. All paid up. Here we go. Um, NFL. All right. I want to talk to you a couple of things. We'll do NFL, then we'll get to basketball, then we'll get out of here. So the pro days are in full swing. I didn't know if you saw this. The Big 12, this is pretty interesting. The Big 12 is holding the first ever of its kind full conference pro day. They have 137 athletes they've invited to Dallas. And they are doing, instead of doing a pro day at each school, they're doing the entire Big 12 conference mm-hmm. is doing the pro day in two different days. I think it's today and Saturday um, in Dallas. Okay. Um, but something to look at for. This is this this is either going to flop or it's going to be a, uh, there's no in between. It's not just going to be okay. This is either going to be a complete flop or this could be the way of the future of pro days and everything else. Why? Because it's I mean you you watched it yesterday NFL Network's already televising the LSU Pro Day, mm-hmm. all right. You know how much money the SEC Network would do what it could make doing a week of I mean it'd be a week probably the SEC but having a big event <laughs> in the spring with SEC Pro Days. Oh yeah, and it had to be some probably in Atlanta somewhere probably in with, Atlanta at with a cover at the dome. Yeah. Do you know how Do you know how much money they could make? Sure. And you know what this game is all about, Neil? Uh, money. Now, the schools don't want to do it because it gives them recruiting opportunities. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of backlash in the coaching community. They don't, want, they don't like it because it gives yeah. you recruiting opportunities yeah. and things like that. But it's about money, man. I mean, look, SEC could say, hey, look, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this thing for, for four or five days a week, whatever it is in Atlanta. And we're going to take half of the proceeds and we're going to give it to each of you schools in your check for your collective. We'll donate the rest of the money to your collective. You don't think they'd all be on that deal? Oh, all day. I mean, something something to look for there. So I'll be that'll be interesting. Um, I saw our boy John Rice Plumley. I got told this morning he, he jumped thirty six inches today. I said, well, yeah, he can also play play ping pong with his cell phone. Is it bad that I've always hated pro day? No, I I didn't like it. I I, I don't. I had to run them. Yeah, that was my job. I hate pro day. All right. I mean, I can see why, but what is your particular reason? I mean, there's well, many. Which one is it? It's just there's not a lot that you, you they 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 herd you off in a little area, and you're just watching dudes run, and jump and stuff, and then afterwards. I mean, I guess it's different if you're covering like first round guys. Yeah, but depends on how big the event is. Who have you heard from? They're all coached on what to say. It's just kind of boring. It's very. I don't know. Yeah, they do get a little, I little, don't, little chalky. I don't. Um, they're just not my favorite thing. As a coach, I did the things I didn't like. I'll tell you, I got some icks. My icks as a coach would be the guy, the senior that I have that was like my fourth or fifth guy. Okay. So he's been with me for three or four years. And he's been my maybe my two or my three or my four receiver. Hasn't been the primary guy. You know, if he gets a shot, I'll be in a mini camp or something like that. And they show up. This is an ick, okay? It never fails. They will show up to Pro Day in the best shape of their life. Yes. In the best shape they've ever been in yes. since they've been alive. Yes. They will show up on Pro Day, in, in, and I'll be like, and I never, like, I, 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 I'm not going to say who it was. I had a particular player yeah. that was like, I did, he didn't start. Hell, he played like 10 plays for me a game. He was just, when we went 10 personnel, he went in at, at slot, um, and he wasn't even a starter in that. But he played about 10 plays a game for me. Good receiver, but just never could get over the hump. I had younger guys better. And he shows up the best I've ever seen him look in his life. I'm talking about was running routes, clean, looking amazing. Looking amazing. And I called him aside. I almost said his name. I called him aside, and I said, "If you," I said, let me explain something. I said, you were out here for an hour. No matter what you did in that last hour, is not going to erase the last four years of film that they have on you. One, yeah. I said. Two is if you would have showed up like that, like I asked you to for the last four years, if you'd showed up at all like that, you'd have a lot more film to where you probably wouldn't even have to go through pro day. It drives me. Did nuts, he ever play man. pro? No, he would have played like uh, CFL or something for a little while. 
Um, so I guess technically yes, but never made it. Um, <clears throat> that used to that used to drive me crazy. And then the, the sad part, I, I this the other part is you always allow them to come back and do it, but when guys have been out for three and four years, yeah, and they and they come back, they've been training every day for the last four years. You're like, man, you just it's, it's not going to happen, man. It's time you got to go. It's time to get a job and take care of your family. You know, what I mean, it's like that. Mm-hmm. That's almost that's sad. Like, I wish, I wish you didn't do that. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, there's one that comes to mind for me who kept showing up, and it was like it's everywhere. Yeah, it's like, dude, this isn't this isn't going to happen. Yeah, your your, op, your window closed. Yeah, that happens everywhere. Um, you get uh, now my favorite. I think I've I've actually told this on the podcast before. My pre- favorite pro day story was when um, we were at South Alabama, and when Gerald Everett's, we had pro day, and we had Gerald Everett, and we had a couple other guys, um, Braden Bowman, some guys that played in the league. Uh, but uh, Tyreek Hill showed up because he was at West Alabama. Okay, and so everybody was like, "Who is this short?" Why would y'all let this short asshole out here from West Alabama? All, all the players, like our players, were talking like, "How do y'all let this guy come and, and do pro day?" Because you would allow. I ran pro days everywhere I've been. Yeah. So if there was an in-state school, especially a smaller school, and like we had Gerald Everett, Gerald's like a first, second round guy, right? Late first, early second round guy, and you're gonna have every team in America there, all 32 teams. And so anytime there was a division two or FCS team that wasn't going to have as hard to get to or whatever, they would send their guys or call you to see if it was okay for them to send their guys to do your pro day to get them more exposure. Right. Well, I knew who Tyreek Hill was obviously because we recruited him when I was at Alabama and he went off, had his career. And so nobody else, he kind of went, went away for a little while, you know, he played at West Alabama, nobody even paid attention. And I remember going, I said, if y'all, all of y'all talk about how fast you are, I've never said this. All mm-hmm. of y'all talk about how fast you are. I said, you said so that little short shit y'all talking about. I said, he is the fastest human being I have ever laid eyes on a person. I said, when you watch him run a 40, if he's not the fastest human being you've ever seen, I said, I'll kiss your ass and give you an hour to draw a crowd. <laughs> and they were like, you're, yo, you know, coach. I said, okay, just watch. And dude, he's just, Shoo! and they all like, Oh, <laughs> and then like coach, why couldn't you get him down here to yeah. South? I was like, well, you see what had happened was, yeah, you can't, that was, he was untouchable after, after the Oklahoma state deal. All right, Neil, um, go have a little discussion. We'll have a little discussion with you right here. All right. This last NFL thing and we'll get to basketball. Okay. All right. So we're about, we're getting that close. We're getting close to the draft time. And I want to talk about, uh, quarterbacks and spe- specifically today. We'll, we'll, as as shows go on, we'll we'll break down some other positions as time goes on. But I want to talk about quarterbacks and specifically first round quarterbacks. Um, we'll start with Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. And I'm interested to get you. This is my opinion on it. I'm interested to get your take on this. I don't think the Bears have a choice. Agreed. Like Caleb Williams, they have <laughs> to take Caleb Williams at one. Yes. Because if you don't take him. Because, look, there's going to be – we're in that month now where all the weird shit starts popping up, mm-hmm. you know. Um, he's got plenty of weird shit. He's got plenty. And there, I'm sure there will be something else come out. Teams trying – I mean – There's a lot. And teams are the ones that leaked that trying to get draft picks. But, anyway, there's going to be some – you know, there's fingernail painting. There's crying. There's – I mean, there's there's plenty. You cannot pass on this guy. No. Or you're fired. He's it, a generational it, talent. If you pass on him and he lives up to that talent, you're done. You're done forever. Now, you take him and then you go into a little private room and you say the most fervent prayer ever. And you just cross your fingers. Because that guy, his ceiling is elite. His floor, Tyler, is deep. His floor has nothing to do with his skill set, though. No, no, no. His floor has to do with, and he's not hasn't gotten any trouble. No, no. It's it's all the stuff around him. Can he lead? Is he going to be a distraction? Can he man up? Can he be tough? And when I say tough, I don't mean tough like physically. Physical. Can you handle the media stuff? Can you lead a locker room? Mentally tough. And if you look at NFL teams, quarterbacks lead locker rooms. Yeah. Can you lead the locker room? Can you be a grown man? Can you stop doing the stuff that makes it easy for people to criticize you? 
And look, it's little stuff. It's little things. But I'm not even not even the crying thing. Whatever. Who cares? It's the don't don't need a rookie contract deserve bigger than a rookie contract. No, take your rookie contract with the confidence that boy, my second contract, I'm gonna Joe Burrow this thing. I'm gonna Lamar Jackson yeah. this thing. And then some of the little stuff that's like distractionish, you could put it away. You don't have to paint your fingernails pink. You don't have to do some of that stuff. You don't have to walk around flaunting your pink phone case and stuff. You don't have to start all that. You you really don't. You can walk because you know this and I know this. And people can push back on all this kind of stuff all you want to. The guys who make it in the NFL as even the super talented guys that make it in the NFL, Mahomes is an example. Mahomes is a freak. Okay, I mean, he's a physical freak. God blessed his arm, legs, feet. Patrick Mahomes is the first one in the building. Patrick Mahomes puts in the work. Patrick Mahomes puts in the work off the field, takes care of his body, is a smart guy. Yeah, he has his fun and he parties, but when it comes time, he's pretty locked in. You got to be that guy in the NFL. Because if you won't be that guy in the NFL, it won't work. Yeah. You and I are intimately familiar with one from Mobile who had all of the physical talent that God could ever give somebody. He's pretty good. I mean, Jamarcus Russell had an absolute thunderbolt for an arm. <laughs> Yes, he did. He was big. He was strong. He could run. He was agile. He was athletic. It was all there. But he didn't want to work. And he had people around him that didn't make him work. And he busted. You can bust in yeah. the NFL. I don't. And that the, the problem with Williams that would scare the hell out of me is that I would if I'm in a room and someone goes, is he bust proof? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I still take him. I think he is uh I don't think he's Jamarcus Russell floor. Um and that might be too strong. Yeah. But hey, you're drafting number well, you're drafting one one. One one's gotta pan out. Yeah. I, I'm uh I just think I, I don't think his floor is as low probably as you think it is. But my own his only like he's been it's almost like he's almost like a homeschool kid. You know what I mean? Like he's been protected so much that, yeah. and he's got this weird, I mean, he's eccentric. He, it is what he is. But that's, everybody's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with being eccentric. You're right. There's nothing wrong with it. But what Neil, as Neil just alluded to, you got to be a leader and you got to fit in with the guys that you're leading. You can't be a, a different bird and lead at the same time, especially at that level. Ask, ask, ask everybody how it worked out for Tim Tebow. All right. You got to be able to, kind of be one of the guys a little bit mm -hmm. so that would be the issue but i still think he's just he's too good i they can't pass up on him i would be like i would be mortifiedly shocked if they passed up on him who's the second guy all right so here's the discussion right and somebody brought it up in the chat a second ago is drake may and Jaden daniels okay those are the two and three and i don't think i think the you know you got the commander sitting at two you got the patriots sitting at three um i think the patriots just sit there and catch who's left I mean, I don't even know if they, if there's any discussion to be had in the building. It's more like, okay, who's left? Um, I like Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels uh, has arm talent. Jaden Daniels is almost kind of a mix for me. A little bit of a little bit of Bryce Young and a little bit of C.J. Stroud, right? Which is two good two good examples. I think he has more arm talent than C.J. Stroud. But when I say Bryce Youngish, he is very polished. Mm -hmm. He's a very good communicator. He's a leader. Um, and he also has a very uh, frail frame that worries you to death. Yeah. Um, and kind of runs a lot straight up, gets hit a lot. Gets hit a lot. Now, can that be coached out of him? I think so because it got coached out of him basically after the Ole Miss game. I think the Ole Miss game, he got smoked on the sideline and fumbled early in the game. Probably cost him the game. And probably cost him the game. Yeah. He, he was kind of a little bit more careful with everything after that, but has great arm talent. Um I think he's very much deserving of a second or third pick. I would have no problem taking him at two or three. Obviously, it's not three, but I would have no problem taking him at two. Jaden has every intangible. Yeah, he's great. He's phenomenal. He's great. Um, will be a leader. All of those things. I mean, he's. It's all there. the The frame scares me a little yeah. bit. 
now Drake May is the other one. Drake May, um, I've seen him throw in person, seen him in high school. Um, I'm big on this kid. I think he has a extremely high floor and an extremely high ceiling. Um, and that's how I like to build rosters is take, I didn't really look at, yes, I looked at ceilings, but I'm all about taking your floor ranking as much more important to me than your ceiling ranking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's a leader. I think he's competitive. I think he's tough. I think he's got arm talents. I think he checks all the boxes. Um, he's big. The reason I would probably put him, if you made if you made me pick, if I was picking for the commanders, the reason I take Drake May over Jaden Daniels, the only reason is age. Drake May is a younger guy. Jaden Daniels has been around for a minute. He's got a couple of years on him. So what's to say in two years um, that Drake May is not a – not already developed. You're getting two extra years basically out of just mother nature out of him than you are Jaden Daniels, maybe more than that. But I know Jaden Daniels was a five-year quarterback, right? Yes. Counting COVID. And Drake May's a three-year guy. So I would probably take Drake May over that. But um, I think Drake May has a chance to be something really special. I really like him a lot. So in my in, in the Siski mock draft, it's definitely Caleb Williams and then, you know, I'm probably taking Drake May two, and I'm taking Jaden Daniels three. Now, here's here's the next one. Okay, I got two more quarterbacks written down here. Everybody is pushing JJ McCarthy like mm-hmm. he is the he is the pro day underwear Olympics hero right now. He is blowing up draft boards mm-hmm. allegedly. I don't see it, and I I, I heard Harbaugh and I, I I admire Harbaugh for what he said. That's his guy, you know, his best best pro day workout I've ever seen. Sure. It's a throwing league. And until the NFL changes, all right, the quarterback has to throw the football. Mm -hmm. Save me. Well, he's a fucking great leader. Save all that shit for me. Well, I don't have any problem with Jim Harbaugh saying it. Yeah. Okay, Jim. How about this? I I, I wish somebody would have followed up the question. Hey, Jim, if you think he's so great, why don't you trade up and take him instead of Justin Herbert? Well, because crickets. Come on, but everyone. I mean, where did Justin Herbert get drafted? But are you really being critical of Jim Harbaugh for saying that about a kid? No, I said I. I, I okay. I, I, okay. My, I, he's probably taken up for his guy. He is. That, okay. A guy who helped him get the job with the Chargers. Would he? Would he have said the same thing if he was if he was leaving to go to Sandy, uh, Los Angeles from the Ohio State Buckeyes? Probably not. Probably not. So that's my point. Yeah. Like this guy went games. Okay. They played Penn State. This dude did not throw a single forward pass in the second half against Penn State in a four point game. Now. Now, let's let's do this. If you're telling me that you have the the four, they're saying this guy's gonna go two. Some of these gurus right here saying this guy's gonna go two. So you're telling me that you had the second overall pick in the NFL draft at quarterback, but you decided to turn around and hand the ball off every play of the second half in a four point game? They believed in their front. You man. can kiss my ass on that one. They believed in their I know why you do that, because you're scared to death he's gonna lose the damn game. Tackle to tackle. They just were dominant. When you don't throw the football, let me tell you what let me tell you the truth. When you line up and you say, Man, we can't when you're when you're running the football every play in the mm-hmm. second half, you're like, guys, the reason we're doing this is because I don't trust that guy to not screw it up. That's why we're doing it. I don't trust that guy to not screw it up. Maybe they just wanted Blake Corum to get the headlines. Bullshit. Bullshit. They can say, they can tell uh, the gurus, the draft gurus, they can tell them that they may believe it, but that's bullshit. Went, did the same thing in the Alabama game, went quiet. And then all of his passes, he threw it like four yards and watched the guy go 70 up the sideline. It's like 70 yard touchdown pass by JJ McCarthy. No, it was like the ball traveled like four yards in the air. He threw a freaking drag route. You're so cynical. Yeah, I'm not. You can save me on the J.J. McCarthy talk. Save me. Like, I don't even. All right, serious question. He's one of the world's great leaders. Serious question. 60 years from right now, J.J. McCarthy can run for president. We're talking about he's going to be the number two overall pick in the draft, some of these draft gurus. If he was in college right now, what pick would he be? If you were running a college team right now and J.J. McCarthy said, hey, I'm foregoing the NFL, I'm coming back to college. And but you could pick any quarterback that's playing this next year. How many? How many? How many picks does he go? I mean, I take him right away. I got him. I, I'm gonna put him <laughs> in there with Blake Corum and that offensive front. We're gonna go do no, it. No, I'm talking about you get any. You're starting a team. Yeah. No, I want McCarthy because he's a great leader. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He, I mean, he's probably not picked in. 
and we're talking about the second pick in the NFL draft, kiss my ass on that. Somebody's somebody's trying to get some clicks. Y'all can say that shit. <laughs> All right. Um, the other one, which I think he's kind of falling, it's kind of going back. It's losing a little bit of his luster, but kind of figuring up where um, – where he kind of ends up is uh, Michael Penix Jr. Um, Michael Penix, great arm talent. <sighs> kind of decision-making is probably going to get him a little bit, but I think he'll get some value at a number two. If he gets the right spot in the second round and, and can go sit for a little bit, I mean, he's going to stick around for a long time because he's a smart kid. He's played forever as well. Um, but a lot of talk early. He was going to go early in the draft, and I think he's falling. But I, I don't see – I would take Michael Penix before I would pay, take J.J. McCarthy. I don't I don't see that. All right. Now that you got me all – Got you worked up. Worked up. I can't J.J. McCarthy, man. Save that shit. All right. Neil. Who are our Bengals taking? 18. We're going offensive line? <sighs> Receiver? There's some, I ain't got that There's far. some Michael Thomas Jr. Talk. They, all kidding aside, they probably have to go get a – I mean, it's the offensive line of wide receiver. I think they have to. Because you you you're you're a, you, if you're going to continue to push it with the receivers and Joe Burrow, you got to get him some help somewhere. Yeah. So it's either got to be offensive line or receiver. I mean, it's one of those two. All right. Um, the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Starts today, Neil. You I'll be up. watching on my phone tonight. I am. I'm. I'm actually excited. I think we got some really, really, really good games. All right. So we did Criteria Club. You for, get the signal good enough out there where you can watch games. Oh yeah. Really? Good. Yeah. I watch every. Okay. Because. When he all he does is run for the second game, right? Yeah. So uh, we always joke he's a he he trades in his baseball cleats for uh, his, his track spikes in the in the second game. <laughs> um, scored on a squeeze. They squeeze with bases <laughs> bases loaded, one out squeeze all night. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Guy had like a one seven to home plate. <laughs> They're squeezing. I was talking to Brock after the game. He's like, he's like, yeah. He goes, there's nothing, there's nothing scarier. Than, oh, they're not making sure that that damn hitter has the because you can't hesitate. You got to just cut it loose and trust oh. and trust that, the, that it's getting down, or he's not, you know, he, and that he didn't miss the signal or whatever. That's what I'm talking about. That bat's what scares the <laughs> yeah. hell out of me. Luckily, it was a left-handed guy. Okay, and he can bunt too. They 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 do a great job of of all these kids because kids can't bunt anymore. They do a Caden them do a great job with them bunting because they they can put them down pretty good. All right, um, but yeah, he he uh he went at squeeze play. He was just cutting loose and I, and he was like, yeah, he goes. He goes that that whole time down the third baseline. I was just going, please square, please square, please square, please, <laughs> please square, or don't swing, don't swing, because he, you know, that's, that's scary. He was already because he was back in the box. He said I already started angling where I could get to the front of the plate, and so he got it down. So it was pretty good. How about that? All right, um, the Sweet Sixteen tonight. Okay, we got four games on tonight, Neil. We'll talk about these four, and then we'll go on to the next ones. All right, we got Clemson versus Arizona. Okay. Arizona, seven and a half point favorites, Neil. Uh, Clemson playing really well right now. Um, Arizona, obviously good. You give me three possessions, I'm taking Clemson in the points. Um, I actually got him a criteria club this morning at seven. It's up to – it was on the on the side I bet on is at seven. Everywhere else, it's seven and a half. But the criteria club play, let me say that real quick. The criteria club play, I'm taking Clemson plus seven. Okay. I'm taking Alabama plus four and a half. Wow, really? Because everybody in America is on, is on the other way around. Yeah. I got a sneaky feeling after Friday, Saturday, after the favorites just crushed Vegas, they're going to try to make some correction tonight. And I'm going to tell you another reason I went by it. And then I took the Illinois money line. Fighting the line. Fighting the line. They were one and a half point underdogs. Kim Palm, been doing your boy good. If I could stay up late enough to watch that game, I will. You will. I it's it's one of those. It's going to be tough. Maybe the game of the year. There's a chance. There's a chance. Um, I've got to worry about ten o'clock, man. I'm, 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 ready, I'm ready to shut it down. Hey, you can do that. You can you can sleep when you're dead. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, sleep is all about mindset. Anyway, you know, you got it's all about positivity. That okay. that three teamer is going to get you at plus six forty two, Neil. Okay. All right. So, um, I think Clemson's playing really well right now. Arizona. Again, they play with their food a little bit, and they're Arizona at any point in time can lay an egg. They got a little bit of Alabama in them. They'll they'll lay an egg. Clemson, the moment's been good. I mean, they the moment hasn't been too big for them. They've been they've been playing really well the entire time, and they they haven't been favored hardly at all. So I'm taking Clemson in the points. That's three possessions. 
Um, I'm not touching this UConn San Diego State game. I think UConn wins the game. Uh, they should. They probably could cover. It. That's eleven and a half is like taking a twenty point spread in, in football. Yeah. I just don't touch it. All right, the Alabama North Carolina. Like I said, Alabama. I'm taking Alabama plus four and a half because everybody else in America is taking North Carolina. Mm-hmm. That's one. Two is Alabama showed signs of life on defense on Sunday. They did. They played well. Um, where did NC State beat North Carolina? I don't remember. They crushed them with ball movement and three pointers. What does Alabama do? But they move the ball and score. They score. They shoot. They're going to be able to score points tonight. It's yeah. just a matter of do they play? If they played, if Alabama shows up and plays defense like they did Sunday, Alabama win the game. The scary part about taking this is when Alabama this loses. This is North Carolina, not Grand Canyon. I'm just telling you. Okay. When Alabama loses, they lose. Yeah. They don't. It's not like oh man, they lost by a couple points. When they get beat, they get beat, and it's usually because they don't shoot. Um. They didn't come home. They've been out there. They're on West Coast time. Let's go. I'm taking the Crimson Tide tonight plus four and a half. And the last game, Illinois and Iowa State. This is a true pick them to me. I think it's two great teams. This is literally the statistically number one offense versus statistically the number one defense uh, adjusted. Um, but give me – I'm, I'm going to take Illinois because it's like one and a half. I get plus money on that. So I'm adding them in the parlay to add odds to it. Um, I actually – by taking Illinois, I got like plus 50 odds on it. So I'm t- I did that. Wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way. I'm just betting it to take a shot. Um, Illinois is playing great right now. Really good. But that was the most interesting part to me was Kim Palm today and their projections and all that stuff had every single underdog covering, which oh. scares the shit out of me with this Vegas overreaction. <laughs> like, I'm so scared tonight. Yeah. I'm either going to be like either Kim Palm's right or Vegas is right. But they've over adjusted. That's never happened. They always are pretty much right on the number. If you're, hey, by gosh, if you're a five point favorite, guess what? You're on Kim Prom. It's almost like Vegas takes Kim Prom to, to fix their spreads. I'm sure they weigh it in, brother. Every single one of them has the has the underdog. Every single that? game has the underdog covering tonight. So that was that's interesting. Yeah, these games get tight. They get close. Got, hey, except UConn, they just keep running through the tournament like freaking just throw the ball, butcher knife. <laughs> All right, uh, then tomorrow we got NC State versus Marquette. I, I think I think Marquette runs away for this one. I think the the Cinderella. Like now, NC State's been good to your boy. Mm-hmm. I've been riding them since the ACC since ACC tournament. I freaking crushed them. Uh, been really good to your boy, but I, Marquette's good. They're, Marquette's very underrated. Uh, they don't get enough credit. They're quietly in there. They're a good basketball team. All right, Neil. I'm probably I haven't looked. I haven't made my Criteria Club picks for tomorrow. If you just made me pick right now, I'm going to take the Zags to beat Purdue. Oh, really? I do. I think that's going to be a big upset. Okay. Zags playing well, man. They are. Purdue's playing well. Since, like, the beginning of February, if you just took erase St. Mary's because they know each other so well, mm-hmm. if you just erase that, Gonzaga's been real. They went and beat the shit out of Kentucky and Lexington. I mean, dude, they're, they're – Yeah, no, that's true. They're real. Like, they've been playing like Gonzaga. Now, beginning of the year, they look like shit. But they have – they have been blowing the doors off everybody. I like the Zags. And then Purdue's just, if the guards at Purdue don't shoot well, they're in trouble. Yeah. Because you can get the ball to Edie, and he can do whatever he wants to, but you turn it into an analytics deal because they start forcing the ball down there, and it's twos, and if he, if he misses, but it's twos versus threes. So um, I'm probably going to pick the Zags. Uh, Duke versus Houston, I'm, pr- I'm predicting a Houston blowout. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. I think they're defensively and and just Houston physically. May, Houston may have escaped their one challenge. Yeah, well, because they were similar styles. Yeah, they they you have to match them physically. Well, A and M will play you very physical. Yeah, very you got to match them physically to give them problems. Duke is not known as a physical tough team. I'll be curious to see what Filipowski does against against Houston because that's the knock on him is is he going to be tough enough as a as a big in the NBA? Well, we will find out tomorrow night about eight o'clock. Okay. All right. And the last game, besides this Illinois Iowa State game, probably the other game that I'm looking forward to watching the most, is Tennessee versus Creighton. Tennessee's favored by two and a half. Mm-hmm. Dude, I could see this going either way. I really could. I haven't decided yet. Um, I've had Creighton in my final four, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope Tennessee wins. I don't know why. I just like Tennessee. I do too. I like this team. If Tennessee shoots, it's over. 
Yeah, they haven't shot particularly well. Connect has not been great in the tournament. He's for them to go Final Four. He's going to have to play great. He's going to have to play, and he hasn't played well for a while. It's been a minute. I mean, he a didn't finish the season. A lot of scouting. Um, what game was it that he scored like the last twenty three or twenty five? Was it Kentucky that he scored like the last twenty three or twenty five points of the game? I can't remember. Alabama, somewhere like that. But um, yeah, that's. That's where I got them, but I think I don't know. I hadn't decided yet, but they're going to be. I think skill set wise and athlete wise, they're going to match up. All right, Neil, I need your final four, final four picks here. Who are we going with? Uh, I'm gonna stick with the ones I've had. I'm going UConn, Houston, okay. Arizona, and Creighton. All right, I am. Those going- were those were my four. I'll just ride with them. Okay. I am going to go since my bracket is destroyed, and it doesn't really matter at this point in time anyway. I'm going with the winner of Illinois and Iowa State to beat UConn. Oh, okay. So the winner of tonight's game okay, to beat UConn on Saturday. All right. I am going with Arizona. Okay. I am going to go with – ooh, ooh, ooh. Who are you thinking about? God. This Tennessee Creighton? Yeah. Mm. To go either way. I, I, I like Give it. me the winner of Tennessee Creighton. Okay. And give me Houston. So you're taking six teams. There. Yeah, I'm taking six teams <laughs> in the final four. That's my bold prediction. <laughs> it's six very, teams, very bold. Six teams. I actually only picked two teams. <laughs> I'm taking six teams to win. <laughs> In the final four. You're welcome, all you gamblers out there, all your futures. This, this question is multiple choice. All right, well, <laughs> I'm going to say it's it's not D. It's either A, B, or C. A, B, or C. There it's not D. <laughs> and it's not all of the above. Everybody's ACT score would jump up a little bit if that were the case. That would be good. That would be good. <laughs> What's the? Am I going to freeze tonight? Uh, let's see. i get you a weather update on the It's so cold, there. man. I've gotten so soft to the cold weather. I went walking the last couple nights, and it was chilly. We got a great chance tonight. I know who's throwing. I don't I want to say in case we got any Lewisburg people listening. I don't know who's throwing for Lewisburg tonight, but we got a great chance to have a future SEC pitching duel going on tonight over over in Oxford. You're going to be okay at the beginning. What time does this start? Five? Uh, seven. Seven. Ooh. Well, I got to be there at five for the first right. game. At five, it's going to be 64. Okay. At seven, it's going to be 59. It's going to drop into the 40s before you Oh, great. Done. Awesome. So but what you're saying is it's a, it's a blank. I look like a 79-year-old man, like – only thing I'm missing is I need one of those plaid blankets to put across my lap. I look like I'm 87 years like old. Like, we go to the soccer games in January when it's two degrees. I have learned how to layer oh. blankets, hand warmers, gloves, hats. You wear a hoodie so you can put the hoodie up over the hat. We even have one of those little portable propane things to put down by your feet. Because there's a dip now. Listen, when it gets into the twenties and you're out there on those cold aluminum, it's cold. Well, the the same grace is I don't have the aluminum, so we we sit in the, in the chair backs, but it's still, dude, it's freaking cold, and it's just the wind blows. It's down there in that. Yeah, God, I man, know. man, it's just it's cold, cold, cold. But nothing like like watching watching your kid play for about forty seven seconds <laughs> when you're. It's like literally you're out there for three hours to watch forty seven seconds. It's pretty good. It's like Carson's freshman year. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, he might play today. Probably won't. Might not. I'll be out here. And then he goes out there and you're like, oh, shit. And then t- two minutes later, he's out. You're like, well, that was fun. I just go, just the only thing that goes through my head, like literally as a parent, is I go, don't get picked off. Don't get picked off. Don't yeah. get picked off. Because if he goes, I'm good. If it, if the ball comes to home plate, I'm good. He'll get there. I'm we, good. Laura sits next to me and she says, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. And I go, don't get in a fight. Don't get in a fight. Don't get in a fight. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it was like the Caitlin Clark thing where they caught her dad going, "Just shut up." Oh yeah, and I, I'll I'll notice the chippiness get started, and then Carson will throw a arm, and I'm like, "Oh God, here we go! Stop, stop! Hey, stop!" Do you have a you have a whistle? No, I can't do it. I I, I wish I could because if I could, I would do once to get his attention just to go. I've gone I've gone down to field level before, just to be able to go cool it. Okay. You don't you you be cool. 
Yeah, I have. Because um, all it takes is a moment, a hair trigger, and then, and you just, you know, he's one of those kids, like a lot of kids, very competitive, where you, I feel sorry for the people that have to coach him because <laughs> they're coaching other kids too. Yeah. I get to just coach one kid, you yeah. know, but he's one of those kids that you, he plays best a little pissed off. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's how you should play. If he's if he's too laid back, he's yeah, kind of lackadaisical, which is very very rarely an issue for him. If he he plays his best when he's a little pissed off, the problem with being a little pissed off is you're really close to being a lot pissed is off. Is that you're you're riding <laughs> you're riding that you're edge. Fence, you're, you're on the edge, <laughs> and it's like you need sometimes to go hey. Come down just a little yeah. off the edge because if you go There's over the line, edge, boss. it's a night night. There's a fine line. I have a whistle with my kids. Now Knox has not gotten Knox is refusing to acknowledge a whistle because he's uh -huh. an asshole. Yeah. But Jackson, <laughs> Jackson and and Brock got the whistle down pat. Like I can <laughs> real loud and just quick. And I, I don't do it long, just <laughs> really loud, quick. And it doesn't matter. They can be it's like a collar. It really is. Yeah. Like I did it the other day at the game, between games. He was on the other side of the dugout. I was standing up behind home plate in the stands. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> and their head pops and he popped. Yeah. And I said, Want something to eat? And I, Want something to eat? He's like, Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or it, but it's very effective. Like if, if he, if I see him being, uh, <laughs> like this is the other one that drives me nuts in baseball is why do we want to have a conversation? Like a full blown like kids text. They don't even want to talk on the phone anyway. But by God, you get a runner on second base, that runner will have a full blown conversation with a guy that he does not know that's playing shortstop. <laughs> it drives me nuts. <laughs> drives me nuts. Like, how about just paying attention to what's going on? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I did it till that <laughs> shit out. Yeah. And I get I get pissed off about that. That pisses me off. They will text they won't talk to you on the phone for 30 seconds. But if they meet a stranger that plays shortstop that they've never seen, talked to, or nothing, they will talk about like, hey, who are you voting for this year? Yeah. I mean, I would like greatest show on TV. They could sell it forever. Put a mic and a camera on the conversations that occur at second base between the shortstop and runner on second. That would be funny. Because yeah. they don't know each other. No, Carson will come home from a soccer game and he's like I'm like, yeah, that number 22 for whoever, that number 27, he's like, oh, John, Miguel. I'm like, How do you know his name? Oh, we talked during yeah, the game. Yeah, we met talked, him during the game. We talked the whole What's time. What's up, John? No, they're so scary. So scary, number four, 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 six, four, six, right? I mean, you're like, well, I mean, it, that, that drives me crazy. And then, uh, yeah, so that's my that's my whistle. I get them. I get their attention. I can I can do it. It doesn't matter the atmosphere. It does not that's matter good. the atmosphere. I've done it in a, at a, I did it on a Friday night in a football game one time. I, wow. I got pissed off because he almost blocked a punt. But he 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 jumped instead of putting his hands down, so I was like, Let's put your hands down from stands, and he that's he'll, awesome. he'll pop. That's awesome. It's a good one. All right, uh, we've been brought to you by our friends at Rain Rain Total Body Fuel, three hundred milligrams natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes. It's got what you need with no sugar to push the limits and achieve your goals. So check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. Enjoy the tournament. Enjoy uh, opening day. Enjoy the final few days of March. We'll be back with you on uh, Monday, April the 1st. April the 1st. This is. This will be April. Will be April. It will be April. For Tyler, I'm Neil. Until then, take care.